Could Bruce Lee, the martial arts legend, have met his end through something far more sinister than a simple headache? This question has haunted the minds of countless fans and admirers for more than half a century. As we delve into this enigma, we turn to Bolo Young, Bruce Lee's close friend and fellow martial artist, to share his recollections of that fateful day. Bolo Young recalls a day much like any other in the life of Bruce Lee. The martial arts icon was in high spirits, engaging in his daily routine with the same vigor and enthusiasm as always. From his morning workout to his afternoon training sessions, everything seemed perfectly normal. Just the usual day in the life of a martial arts superstar. Bolo describes his interactions with Bruce on that day. They had shared a hearty laugh over a lighthearted joke, exchanged ideas on their upcoming film project, and even sparred for a while, as was their custom. Bruce was in peak physical condition, displaying the same agility and strength that had made him a household name worldwide. Bruce's energy was infectious, his vitality unmistakable. He was the epitome of health and fitness, a living testament to the power of discipline and dedication. To Bolo, and indeed to everyone who encountered Bruce that day, the idea that this would be his last day seemed unfathomable. As the day drew to a close, Bruce complained of a headache. It seemed like a minor inconvenience, hardly a cause for concern. Little did anyone know, this seemingly insignificant ailment would soon escalate into a tragedy that would shock the world. Despite the official reports attributing Bruce's death to a brain edema, those who knew him personally harbored doubts. The suddenness of his departure, the stark contrast between his vibrant health and his untimely demise, it all seemed too incongruous. The question remained, was there more to Bruce Lee's death than met the eye? As we delve deeper into the mystery, we can't help but wonder about the truth behind this unanswered mystery. What if I told you that the universally accepted cause of Bruce Lee's demise was potentially fabricated? Now this isn't a claim I make lightly. It might sound like the stuff of conspiracy theories but bear with me. When we think of Bruce Lee, we picture a man at the pinnacle of physical health, a martial arts expert with unparalleled prowess. So, his sudden death officially attributed to a cerebral edema was a shock to us all. But the more I delved into the details, the more inconsistencies I found in the official reports. Let's take a trip down memory lane. I had the privilege of working closely with Bruce during the production of Enter the Dragon. I observed him, not just as a fellow actor but as a friend. The Bruce I knew was meticulous about his health, rigorous in his discipline. The idea that he would be careless with medication, resulting in an adverse reaction, just didn't add up. Then there were the whispers, the hushed conversations that would cease the moment I entered a room. Certain individuals when questioned about Bruce's death, suddenly became evasive, their responses vague and rehearsed. It was as if they were hiding something, a secret that was too dangerous to reveal. The official cause of death, cerebral edema, can be triggered by a number of factors including brain trauma, infection, or an allergic reaction. But none of these seemed to fit the bill. Bruce was in peak health, with no history of brain injury or illness. And the idea of an allergic reaction? It was a possibility but it seemed too convenient, too neatly packaged. I'm not a detective but I couldn't ignore these glaring inconsistencies. I felt a duty, both to my friend and to the millions of fans mourning his loss, to seek out the truth. The truth it seemed was shrouded in mystery and intrigue, and my quest to uncover it had just begun. The shocking truth as I discovered was far from anything any of us could have imagined. As Bolo Young began to delve deeper into the mysterious circumstances surrounding Bruce Lee's untimely demise, he stumbled upon a startling revelation, one that would forever change the way we perceive the events of that fateful day. This revelation was not something Bolo happened upon by chance, it was the fruit of painstaking work, of countless hours spent poring over long-forgotten documents, meticulously piecing together fragments of information to construct a coherent narrative. It was the result of numerous conversations with those who had known Bruce personally, those who could provide a unique perspective on the events leading up to his death. Bolo's journey in search of the truth was not an easy one. He had to navigate a labyrinth of half-truths and outright lies, of rumors and speculation, of conflicting accounts that muddied the waters and made the truth elusive. The lengths he went to in his quest were extraordinary, a testament to his unwavering resolve to uncover the truth, however uncomfortable it may be. The evidence Bolo unearthed painted a picture that was drastically different from the one we had been led to believe. He found inconsistencies, anomalies that simply couldn't be explained away, 
discrepancies that pointed to a truth that was far more unsettling than any of us could have anticipated. The people Bolo spoke to, those who were willing to share their knowledge, their experiences, their memories, corroborated his findings. They too had noticed these inconsistencies, these anomalies, but had been too afraid to speak up, to challenge the conventional narrative. The implications of Bolo's findings were staggering. They cast a long shadow over the events surrounding Bruce Lee's death, raising questions that demanded answers, challenging the version of events that had been accepted as fact for far too long. They completely upended the narrative, forcing us to reassess everything we thought we knew about Bruce Lee's untimely passing. But perhaps the most significant implication of Bolo's revelation was the profound impact it had on our understanding of Bruce Lee, the man. It peeled back the layers, revealing a side of Bruce that was largely unknown, a side that was as human and as vulnerable as any of us. It was a stark reminder that behind the legend, behind the larger-than-life persona, was a man who, like all of us, had his own struggles, his own fears, his own vulnerabilities. The truth was as shocking as it was heartbreaking, but it needed to be told for Bruce and for all of us. Because in the end the truth however painful is always preferable to a lie, however comforting. And in the case of Bruce Lee, a man who lived and breathed authenticity, it was the least we could do. This revelation not only changes what we know about Bruce Lee's death, but it also raises serious questions about the world he lived in. So says Bolo Young, a man whose respect for Bruce Lee is as palpable as the strength in his voice. The implications of these findings are far-reaching, extending beyond the mere circumstances of Lee's death. Bolo suggests that this revelation could fundamentally shift our understanding of Bruce Lee's life and work. The martial arts maestro, the film star, the cultural icon, all these facets of Bruce Lee's persona now stand under a new light. A light that reveals not just a man of extraordinary skill and charisma, but also one who navigated a world far more complex and potentially dangerous than we'd imagined. And what of the industry that Lee was a part of? The world of martial arts and cinema, where intrigue and power plays are as much a part of the landscape as creativity and talent. Bolo's revelations force us to question the structures of this world, to scrutinize the power dynamics that governed Lee's life, and possibly, his death. Bolo's voice grows firmer as he emphasizes the need for transparency and accountability. He speaks of a justice that extends beyond the personal, beyond Bruce Lee. He talks about a justice that calls for a critical examination of the systems we inhabit, systems that can sometimes hide more than they reveal. A justice that demands the truth no matter how uncomfortable or inconvenient it may be. And in the end, isn't that what Bruce Lee himself stood for? A man who broke barriers, who defied norms? who dared to be different, who stood up for what he believed in. His life was a testament to strength, resilience, and courage. His death, as Bolo Young suggests, could well be a call to action. Bruce Lee was not just a martial artist or an actor. He was a symbol of strength, resilience, and courage. And he deserves nothing less than the truth. Bringing this truth to light has been a difficult journey, but a necessary one. As we draw this narrative to a close, let's hear from Bolo Young, who has been our guide through this tumultuous tale. Bruce Lee's spirit was indomitable, says Bolo, and it is that spirit that we should carry forward. The revelations we've shared today have been shocking but they are a part of the history we must confront. We should not allow them to overshadow the legacy of a man who was a beacon of strength and discipline. Looking towards the future, Bolo expresses hope. My wish is for us to embrace the lessons we can learn from Bruce's life. His dedication, his passion, his pursuit of excellence, these are the traits we should remember and emulate. Bolo's final words echo in our minds. In the end, it's not about how Bruce Lee died but about how he lived. And that is a legacy worth preserving.